Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're gonna be talking about strings and the string class. It's gonna be a lot of fun. This video is sponsored by Embarcadero C++ Builder. This is the IDE of choice if you wanna build complex C++ applications. They have a community edition, so you can go try it out for free. This is an IDE that gives you everything you need to build C++ applications. One of the big things is that you can deploy to multiple platforms, Windows, iOS, Mac, and Android. It's got a built-in debugger, user interface development, database connections, IoT, Bluetooth, all kinds of sexy capabilities. <laughs> Go check it out, I'll leave a link for you in the description. Now to get back to strings, there are basically two ways to use strings inside a C++. One of them is basically a backwards compatibility with C, which is usually called C style strings or just C strings. And then there is the string class, which is the C++ way to build strings. We're really going to be focusing on the C++ way of doing things, but you're probably going to see C strings, so you should probably know that they exist at least. So I'll try to call out any differences between the two, but the main thing you guys need to know is that the string class is superior in all ways to the C style of strings. So don't go down that route, even if you're more familiar with it, if you're coming from C, you need to learn how to use the string class of C++. So if you haven't used either and you just need to get started somewhere, then this is the video of choice because we're gonna be teaching you the right way to do it. First thing you need to do is include string. So it's gonna look like this. That's going to give us access to the string class. So we can create a string by saying string, giving it a name, and then assigning it a value. So this here is a string literal, and we are allowed to create a string object using string literals. So this greeting is going to be of type string. This means it's an object of the class string. So someone built this string class, which has a bunch of capabilities for working with strings, and we're just utilizing this class by creating an object, an instance of this class. So greeting is an object that we can now use inside of our program. Now a string is basically a sequence of characters. It's literally characters strung together. And we can access the individual characters using an array-like syntax. So if we wanted to access one of these characters, what we could do is say greeting and then inside of square brackets we can put a number such as zero. Now when we compile we actually get an error and that's because you have to prefix string with standard. So string is part of the standard namespace. If you don't wanna to have to prefix that, go up here and say using standard colon colon string like so. Then you don't have to prefix string here. So now when we compile, it works. But in general, I'm going to be prefixing things over using the using statements. So I'm gonna go down here and prefix this with standard. Now when we compile and we run, what happens is we get H. That's because this zero is telling us to grab the first character, H. It's zero based, meaning H is zero, and it counts up from there. So E is one and so forth. Now, another thing you should know is that the default value for a string is an empty string. So if we declare the value, and then let's just say we output the entire string without the, the square brackets there. When we compile and run, all we do is get an empty string. An empty string, by the way, is this here. Two quotes, nothing in between them. This is in contrast to other languages where if you declare a string and you fail to initialize a value to it, if you try to use it, you might get a compiling error. C++ on the other hand, just defaults it to an empty string. The next thing you should understand is there is string concatenation. So when you use a plus sign with strings, it does something known as concatenation, which is just combining strings. So I could add another string in here, such as there, and what this is going to do is just combine these strings together. So let's say this one is hello, and then we concatenate there to the string, and it says hello there. We're doing that inside of an expression here, but we could assign that to another string. So for example, I can cut that, go up here, create a new string and say complete greeting, and assign that greeting plus there. Then when we output it, we could just say complete greeting like so. And you can see it gives us the exact same result. We can also append to a string, which is very similar to concatenation, but it's just going to append to the original variable. So what we could do is say complete greeting plus equals, 
and then put an exclamation mark, for example. This is going to append this exclamation mark to the end of this variable. So now when we compile and execute, we get hello there with an exclamation mark. Now because string is a class, it has members. When you build a class, you put things inside of it that allow the user to work with the class when you create an object of the class. So in this case, we're creating a string object and that object is going to have members inside of it. What exactly do I mean by members? Well, we can have functions that are tied to the string class. And we're gonna go through an example of that. So if we go down here and do another C out, what we can do is we could say complete greeting dot and then add a function here such as length. And then we'll just put a new line at the end. So what is going on here? Usually when we have a function call, we just leave it by itself, but here we're actually attaching it to an object. That's because length is a member of the string class. And that's going to become a lot more clear once we define our own classes, you can see how that works. But for now, just understand that functions can actually come from classes and we call them by using the dot operator on an object and then putting the function name. So let's run this, see if it works. I got an error because I forgot to put an L there. Awesome. Now when we run, we get 12. This is the number of characters inside of the string. We got five here, a space, and then another five, that's 11, plus an exclamation mark, that's 12. So now you understand that we can call functions attached to objects using the dot operator. Now there's another term you should understand, and that is method. You can think of this as a member function. So when a function is a member, we're just saying that it is part of the object because it was defined in the class string in this case. So methods are just functions attached to objects. You'll often hear the terms used interchangeably. Functions are just by themselves. Methods are attached to objects using the dot operator. Now, if you're new to object-oriented programming, this might be a bunch of junk that you don't understand, and that's totally fine. Right now, just start familiarizing yourself with the syntax of calling functions attached to the objects. And later on, when we talk about object-oriented programming, I'm gonna clear all of this up. Yes, this can be complicated, but it's still significantly easier than the way you have to deal with strings inside of the C programming language. So if you wanted to see a brief example of a C string, what you have to do is you have to say char and then give it a name and use square brackets. And then you can assign it a literal value such as Caleb. This square bracket thing means it's actually an array. So a C style string is just an array of characters. This works, but there's a lot of limitations. For example, the string size is not easily changed. When we assign a string literal such as Caleb, the size of name is going to be six characters. And those six characters are going to be C-A-L-E-B and then backslash zero, which is the null terminating character. That means the amount of memory that this name has is limited to six characters. And we can't assign it another value that's larger than that. So if we try to do something like name is equal to Taco Bell, <laughs> what's gonna happen is we're gonna get an error when we compile. And you can see array type char six, it's size six characters long, is not assignable. So we can't even change the value of these, even if it's shorter. If we just give it the value T, nothing. It's not gonna let us. So that's one of the downsides with the C style strings. C++ strings with the string class are not like that. So for example, we have this complete greeting here. We can actually change that if we want. We could say complete greeting is equal to go away. And if I comment out this error here, you can see we can compile with no problems. Awesome. So you can see that C strings are a little bit more complicated and not as easy to work with. The string class is much more flexible and is the recommended way to go. Now what happens if you wanna get a string from user input? Well, let's clean all this up. Let's just go back to our one string called greeting. And we'll just get this from C in. So let's get rid of this assignment and we'll just declare it. So we're gonna have standard C in and we're gonna store that inside of greeting. Then what we're going to do is we're going to output that like so. When we run, we can put a value in here. Let's say, hello there, and press enter. What it outputs though is only hello. What's going on here? Why is it just saying hello when we clearly said hello there? Well, that's because the CN object only grabs the first word. So it basically looks for a space. Once you put a space, it stops. 
How do we fix this exactly? Well, that's actually the subject of next video, which is going to be how we get user input for strings. Definitely check that out because if we can only get one word at a time, that's going to be very limiting. You'll definitely need to watch the upcoming video if you want to strengthen your C++ development. So thank you guys. If you've enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.